Hi, pre-calculus students. Welcome to the 2.2 examples video on polynomials. So we took notes in the last video on how to do these problems, and now we're going to go ahead and do those. So number one, write polynomials given zeros. So let's take a look. On A, our zeros are negative 1, 2, and 0. So we're going to go ahead and write the factors with our x's of, that go with these zeros. In other words, these zeros make those factors 0. And then we're going to multiply them out. So here we go. Polynomial, let's do y equals. So the opposite of negative 1 is plus 1. So the factor. Right, this, it's a baby polynomial, right? X plus one, it's actually a line, right? Y intercept of one uh, slope of one, right? It's a baby polynomial. And notice that it's zero is negative one, right? So the baby polynomial with a zero of two is X minus two. And this will kind of throw students when they have a zero, but really it's the, it's the same, it's X minus zero, of course, we don't need minus zero. So when your root is a zero, you just have an X, right? Because when you put a zero in, you get a zero, it's the zero. So let's go ahead and multiply these out. I am first going to multiply the first um, binomials and then I'll go through and multiply everything by X. So X times X is X squared, minus two X plus X is minus X plus one times negative two is negative two. And then I'll multiply everything by X. And we get X cubed minus X squared minus two X. This is a polynomial who has these zeros. On B, what if you are given the roots of one and the square root of two? As we said in our notes, there must also be a negative square root of two because when someone solved for these roots and they took the square root to do that, they had to have a plus or minus in front of that square root of two. Let's write the factors. This time we'll use f of x. So for one is x minus one. For the square root of two is x minus the square root of two. And for a negative square root of two is x plus the square root of two. Now, I know it's tempting to go left to right like to multiply these two binomials first, but without a doubt, when you have square roots or i's, you do want to multiply these two binomials first. Why do we want to do this? Because these are conjugates of each other. They are the same two terms with a minus and a plus between. And if I multiply these out, then I will have a simpler, um, a simpler polynomial to multiply x minus one by. Would you be okay if you multiplied x minus one times x minus the square root of two and then by x plus square root of two? Yes, but it would be much more difficult, okay? So let's go ahead and multiply these two binomials first. Uh, notice I'm just hanging on to my x minus one factor. Okay, let's multiply here. x times x is x squared. Notice that the outers and the inners eliminate. And so last, a negative square root of two times a positive square root of two is a negative two. Again, notice if I made you take this polynomial here and set it equal to zero to solve it, you would add a two and take the square root and you would have plus or minus the square root of two, right? And so those, this really is the polynomial that goes with these two zeros. All right, last. First outer inner last of the two binomials here. This would be an x cubed. On the outside, I have minus 2x. On the inside, I have minus x squared. And last, I have plus 2. Now, to put it in standard order, though, I would have my minus x squared before my minus 2x, just for standard form. There we go. This is a polynomial with these zeros. Next, find factors or, and zeros with multiplicity of. So if you've been given this polynomial and it's set equal to zero, let's find those zeros. So obviously we need to factor this 
The first thing we're going to do is a greatest common factor. Notice each term has a greatest common factor of x, and that would leave x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0. Okay. f of x. I guess I don't really need the f of x, right? I'm just setting it equal to 0, All right? So here's my x that I factored. Now here for this quadratic, I need two factors that multiply to 9 and add to negative 6. That would be negative 3 and negative 3, right? Two factors that multiply to a positive 9 and add to a negative 6. Here we go. Let's set each of these factors equal to 0. x equals 0 already solved. x minus 3 equals 0 will give us x equals 3, right? Notice that when I set this um, binomial equal to 0, obviously I'm going to get the same answer. So this root of 3 occurs twice. So the root of 0 has a multiplicity of 1. That root only occurred once. The root of 3 had a multiplicity of 2. That means on a graph, um, where uh, you have x equals 0 as an x-intercept, the graph would just go through it like a line. And where you have um, the root of x equals 3, that x-intercept, because it occurs twice, like degree 2, there would be a parabola sitting on it. Okay, let's sketch um, a polynomial by hand. Now, notice to save time. I pick the same polynomial we just found the zeros of, right? So that um, we can use those zeros that we found, okay? So let's take a look. N behavior, uh, your book calls that the leading coefficient test. I don't really agree with them because we know N behavior has to do with the degree of the polynomial and the leading coefficient. So let's take a look. Um, N behavior and the general shape, it's kind of nice to know, right? So x cubed, right, has a general shape. It could have three slopes, right? So I'm expecting something, right, a cubic, kind of like this. Notice because it's odd and the leading coefficient is positive, so the leading coefficient is positive and it's odd, that means that the graph will fall on the left and rise on the right, right? It will increase as we go left to right because of the positive leading coefficient and the ends will do the opposite. Okay, the real zeros, um, we already got, that was zero and x equals three and that had a multiplicity of one and a multiplicity of two. So let's make, let's make that x intercept, let's make that zero and let's make this three here. Okay, now, here is something I know. I know that the graph goes through x equals zero. And as you go left to right, it must go increasing through zero, right? Because it falls on the left here, right? So to the left of this zero, right? It must fall, right? And so it must go through that zero going upward as you go left to right, because it has to end on the left falling. I had indicated that where x equals three, that there must be a parabola sitting here, and this is the vertex of it. Notice that parabola could not be underneath, right, because it has to end up. So what I know is I must have, it has to end upward, Right, so it must look something like this. How do I know it doesn't go back down? There would have been another zero. I would have found it. Okay, so here's what I know so far, right? So again, let's just go through those zeros again. And behavior falling and behavior rising. Zero, um, uh, x-intercepts of zero and three. I realize then because of the multiplicity one that the graph goes through like a line through um, zero, and that it must fall on the left and rise on the right. Because of the multiplicity two on the three, I knew it was a parabola, 
underneath or on top, and it had to be an underneath, sorry, on top, the way I drew it, because it has to end upward. So I guess my real question is, is I, I have a lot here, but I kind of need to know what's going on here where X is one and two, like does it go really high up? right? Is it just close to the x-axis? What's going on? So now we're on solution points, right? Where we're picking points in between just so we can make a smooth curve. Let's put in a one for our x and let's see what's going on there. When I put a one into the parabola, let's see, I get one um, minus six plus nine, right? So this is a negative five plus four I just said the answer, a negative five plus nine is four. So this is going up to four. Okay, make that a little steeper. And then it must come back down and go up. Now, could you get some more solution points like at two or at four? Sure you can, but this is called sketching. Graph is when you're point by point, you have each one right. This is a sketch. And let's take a look on the calculator. How did we do? Oh, look at that. There we go. We did really well. So one, two, three, just checking. One, two, three, we did really well. There you go. There's our examples for 2.2. .2. Have a great day.